What's up, everybody? This is Derek, longtime OG of the challenge. Plus, uh, I'm over here chilling with Dak and Adam, telling all types of ridiculous Johnny Bananas stories from from uh, yesteryear. Listen to this podcast. Listen to my podcast, and have a great fucking day. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Hollywood Raw family? How are you guys doing? Like, subscribe, follow our YouTube channel. I'll follow you back if you do it. Uh, comment down below. Uh, I guess today is a fellow podcast host, but also a reality TV OG star for MTV. Uh, it is Derek from The Challenge. Welcome, Derek. Derek, thank you. Uh, dude, thanks again for coming on this, brother. It's uh, it's cool to talk to a guy who's an OG, uh, not just the podcast space now, but also of the MTV Challenge space where uh, Dax and I are big fans. How many challenges have you competed now in? Uh, I've done 10 uh, with uh, one all stars that's uh, on Paramount plus. Um, and, uh, and I had that, uh, had a cameo for that mercenary elimination, uh, which you might as well just give it a season. Cause um, it was so awesome, I guess in my book, but, um, but yeah, no, it's, I guess that we would call it 10 plus one. Okay. Yeah. We had, okay. we had Mark long on here. Like when he was like, championing that that whole project along and like talking He's about it was in the infancy stage yeah he was like i want this to happen i'm I'm going out and he made it happen it was pretty dope it was a big success too i mean it was kind of cool that he got all those people involved and i think as me as a guy who grew up on mtv's the real world and the ogs of the show i'm not really familiar with are you the one so to see people like derek and all the the older cast members compete was that was a lot of fun how was it for you um, so like, it's, it's kind of crazy because it's just been this like evolution and then it's now it's like the, the evolution of the revolution because there've been so many, like, uh, so many, so many ways that they've tried to like, you know, make it different or change the theme. And now they're just like pulling from people from all over the place, different countries, survivor, Romania, survivor, Turkey, you know, 12 days of Christmas, wherever that's from. And so now it's like this like conglomerate of, uh, you know, the most entertaining reality TV characters that have ever existed on the planet. But the, what Mark Long did is he kind of was like, yo, you guys are forgetting about the fucking soldiers that paved the way. Why are you forgetting about the Vex? People on the internet have been banging on the challenge walls for years and years and years. Get, you know, give me Mark Long. Give me this one. Give me that one. Why isn't Derek back? Well, somehow he made, you know, he made the way to towards the uh, challenge gods and um, made it happen. So now it's like, now you can see the OGs on the All-Stars season on Paramount+. Plus. And then, you know, we'll see if there's like a season two, three, and four. But I think it's wide open for that. And he's talking about having like a Super Bowl for like season 40 of like All-Stars versus the main show. So, I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like All-Stars feels like AEW. And <laughs> like the show is like WWE. And it's like, you know, what's going to happen? But I, I think it's just cool, man. I think it's cool to, like, have all these characters, man. The, the reason why I do the podcast is just at some point I felt like my story was untold. And each person that, like, each person that I've, like, interviewed, they have this, like, special story. And a lot of times because of, uh, you know, time restrictions, their, their story's just kind of left untold. But it's like, so fascinating like how the fuck did they get there what do they do in their normal lives um you know they've been chosen to to entertain millions of people across the world but you're gonna give them like i don't know an equivalent of like two minutes of tv time like that doesn't make sense so 
um, yeah, the, the podcast has been going on for like three years and, uh, you know, we're still kicking and, you know, we're covering this season of, uh, of the challenge. That's awesome. When, when was the last challenge that you did, by the way? So I did all star, all star season one on Paramount plus, um, which was, I believe kind of Paramount Plus's way. They kind of like, I feel like they used us to like push their streaming service and I think it worked. So um, we had good reviews. And then the season I did before that was Dirty 30, which would be season 30. They're on season 37 now, Spies, Lies, and Allies. So about about seven seasons ago, about three or four years ago, was the, the last time you saw me like a main show. Um, I did the Mercenary Elimination probably, um, I don't know, season maybe like 31 or 32. So um, – I don't know wherever your brains go with that. <laughs> <laughs> what, how long is the gap usually in between challenges? Like you get off the show. I mean, I guess the gap could range on how quick you get eliminated, but generally how long is the gap in between each different season? You know, I think that they do generally like two, uh, two seasons a year, two big seasons a year that last about two months. If you make it to the end, and I think that there's like maybe like a maybe three month gap or something like that. So let's say if they film in, I don't know, January, then maybe they would film like, you know, mid year or something like that. Um, so and I think in past years, they've tried to do like do like the champs versus stars or the, uh, you know, ch champs versus pros. And that kind of like didn't happen. But at some point. The reason why the podcast is called Challenge Mania is because it was like WrestleMania challenge style all year long. And you had people like Mike The Miz out here hosting Champs versus Pros, Champs versus Stars, and kind of helping push push these shows. So there's like a year long, year long challenge. Um so uh so yeah, um, but I remember back in the day, like CT, for example, like I don't know if he's ever taken a break from uh, like ever since he came back. And he, I mean, he did all the champs versus stars and yeah. he did all the, and now he's just like still going. So for people like him, there have may have only been like a month, a month break in between shows for like three or four years, like Carl Maria, you know, like, like people like that. Um, Back when Champs versus Stars was a thing, they were going back to back to back um, to back. So I guess it just depends on, you know, who it is. But I think generally they're doing two shows a year that last about two months. And now with COVID, it's like, I mean, if there's a start and yeah. stoppage, it's like uh, now we're pushing fucking two and a half months. And you're like, how well is my kid really doing? <laughs> <You know? laughs> now, does this if become like does this become like a full-time job for a lot of people that are involved in the challenges? Cause I can't imagine like having like, let's say a normal job and like going to the normal job and then, Hey, by the way, I'm going to be gone and film for two months yeah. and then I'm going to come back. Like it's gotta be difficult. Right. Yeah. So back in the day, man, uh, you know, I did, I did road rules when I was 19 and then I did six challenges in a row. So like college was, like, why am I going to go to college when I have this really cool, like, fucking TV show gig, right? And where where you would also be accompanied by, like, you know, bars and club appearances. And then also, like, a, a speaking engagement here or there. And, and and so, but at some point, like, the pay wasn't, you know, it wasn't what, you know, what it wasn't what it is now. Where it's, like, comparable to, like, you can pay your bills. You have some money on the side. And then you may win a big fucking chunk of change at the end of this thing back in the day, man, like people were like, when are you going to get a normal job? What, you know, before, before social media, like really had their boom and you can like have the influencer stuff and you can market on social, market your products on social media. Um, it, people were like, when are you going to get a real job? You know? So now it's all different, man. Reality TV is almost taken over. Like remember back in the day when like you couldn't do movies and reality TV because yeah. you were like, recognize or even probably for you guys too right like um like because you guys are so well known in this field or your face is so well known in this field how could you possibly have a role or do something else now you can 
you know, now you can sort of be pseudo endorsed by like some smaller company who's throwing you a little bit of money for promoting their product. You know, maybe it's not Under Armour, but maybe it's like, I don't know, some of these like little products here and there. Chubbies, what up? You know, Chubby? <laughs> what up, Chubby? Like, it's like, it's not, but it's like, you kind of support each other, you know, your team and you're doing this on social media and you're growing and they're growing. And, you know, so luckily with the social media boom, like we can do shit like that now. Yeah. Whereas when it back then, it's like, get a real job. It's like, fuck, I really like this job. How do I keep it going? Well, you really can't because there's not enough money out there. Yeah. So yeah, when you go sure. on the show, does, you know, does, do you get a little bit of money does MTV give it a little bit of money for each week you last on the series, plus the bonus of winning the grand prize? How does that work? Yeah, I, so I, I, I'm, 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 uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm contractually obligated not to like speak too much about this, but sure. uh, yeah, there, you know, there is a little bit, you know, to to go on, and then, that's great, and and that's, and I'll just leave it at that. But it's yeah, now yeah. it's worth, you know, it's like you can be a parent, and 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 you can you can tell your child. Um, or your husband or your wife, like, or significant other, yo, or your job, yo, can I take a leave of absence? I'm going to go on the show and I'm not just going to have fun. I'm not just going on some kind of fucking spring break excursion with a bunch of crazy animals that you've seen do crazy shit on TV. It's like, no, it's like, now I'm going, you can, you can, you can sort of, uh, go to work. You know, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to work. And guess what? This job may excuse me. Um, this job may, you know, may help me in the future somehow. So yeah. It's changed, man. No, it's, that's it's all it's, I think it says a lot to you as a person, like where they could get any person to do this job, but they like you so much, and then you have such a following, but also an attachment to the show. Like, we need to take care of him so he keeps doing the show and you know and like the other people the cts and some of the other people on the show so i i think that says a lot about you as a person and as your role on the show that you know they 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 want to have you they need to have you because they know part of the success of the show is of the viewers um well, relationship they, they, like, with you i was gonna say they the viewers like myself they start to like love you guys so much or gravitate to a certain personality you want to see him back and i think that's what like kind of what you mentioned before with mark long and what he did with the vets it's like you grew up and you're like you identified with people or you just you know are gravitated towards certain personalities and to see them all back together which is where the magic really came into with that show where, where's like the best place that you've ever traveled for one of these challenges uh, you know, it's, it's so, so you tell me, like, what do you think is the coolest? Because for us, we go there and we film and I'll, and I'll throw you all my, I'll give you all the countries that I've been to. Okay. And, and, and you can just sort of, you can go into the magic kingdom <laughs> and, and, and try to like fantasize what you think, because we go there and we work, right? So we get to see cool shit, but we go back to the house and we're primarily in the house. We're not, we're not able to like venture out and like really experience like the culture and the people and the accents and, and the, um, and the, even, uh, even afterwards, like once you're done filming, you go, you don't get like a two weeks to just like enjoy. So like I, my kid's 12. So anytime I, I like, anytime I, uh, anytime I I've gone on a show, I have like, all right, I got to get back to my kid. You know, yeah. I, I haven't got to the point where I'm like, yo D I'm going to stay in this other country. I, look, I did. I did a couple of years ago. I did. I was like, you know what? These guys, they talked to me into going to Ibiza uh, when I was in Spain. Uh, I was an alternate in Spain and they didn't use me. So we started drinking and uh, Kellyanne and Corey Brooks, who was on Big Brother and uh, and uh, Nicole had, Ramos just got eliminated. And, you know, they were going to use me, then they weren't. And I was just like, start, I already started drinking. And they were like, all right, you're good. And then they talked to me into going to Ibiza. And I'm like, all right, all right. This is, this is one of those situations where I'm like, all right, D, I'm not coming back for a couple of days. <laughs> I'm going to be gone. <laughs> These will be stories you will never hear in your life. And, um, and uh, so we did that in, in Spain. 
But previously, um, so my kid was probably about nine or 10 at that point. Um, and uh, I was, you know, happily divorced. And I was like, fuck it. You're going to watch, you know, like, we're, I'm just going to do it finally. Like, because back in the day, like I, I went to Czech Republic. I'm 100% Polish. I'm like, the Czech Republic is like right across the street from Poland. And I never went. And I'm like, I've never been to Poland, but I speak the language. I read and write it. I speak in a different dialect. And I've never like, I've never been able to go and stay and submerge myself into these like cool countries. So it's kind of like, I guess I, you know, I guess, I guess it's one of my, what, what do they call the, what, you know, regrets. One of my regrets is that I really haven't been able to like do what you're saying. So to answer your question and, uh, and, and, and I really do feel like the, the characters are kind of like, like Disney characters, right? Like when you go to, um, you know, when you go to the Magic Kingdom or, or whatever, wherever you're at, you see these people out in public, it's like, oh my gosh, there's fucking Daffy Duck. Oh my God, look, he's with Bugs Bunny. <laughs> um, so you're like, you know, you guys have seen us on TV for so long and like rooted for us or seen us, you know, you guys have seen us laugh, cry, you guys have seen us at our worst, at our best. And like, you're like, fuck bro, I remember you doing that crazy thing over there. And <laughs> so I, I feel like, that's kind of how we are to a lot of people or like Tom and Jerry or whatever. But to answer your question, you tell me what's the coolest country. Well, Chile. What, yeah. What was the hardest one to live at? Like, was there? I'm sure there's like, yes, you don't get to experience all the, the nightlife and the culture and uh, the food. But like, was there one that, you know, that was amazing or just beautiful? And was there one that the bugs were just coming at you all night and just getting killed by mosquitoes and stuff? Yeah, so um, I'd say there was a show called The Island um, where it was kind of very like Survivor esque, and we had to sleep in like bug nets. Um, and it was like you know you had like limited amount of food, and the bugs were like eating the girls up. Like I remember some of the girls left just like legs, just I mean like mosquito like bites all over their legs, like to the point where they like scratched like scars into their legs, um, probably because of the lotions they were using, along with like the bugs and whatever the case may be. Um, that was pretty, that was pretty shitty. Um, but, uh, but for me, Argentina always feels like kind of like a home away from home. Uh, I did my first season of road rules there. We spent a month in Chile. Then we spent a month in Argentina where I could actually submerge myself in the cultures and, and, the uh, um, you know, in, in the different, um, uh, uh, like just, just the RV parks and just, you know, the landscape, like I was able to like experience Argentina. And then when we did the challenge, the first season of the challenge all-stars, um, that was also in Argentina. And then I ran a final in, uh, on dirty 30 in Argentina. We went from Colombia to Argentina just to run the final. So I kind of feel like my heart is like, don't cry for me, Argentina. It's like, I've never left you. And I feel like I'm coming back at some point. So I feel like Argentina is a good one. And, uh, you know, the island in Panama was kind of like, what, you know, what about well, the New Zealand one? I, that was like, um, was it like a dual season or something like that? New Zealand, though, I feel yeah. like that that's just one place I've always wanted to go to. So I think that's why in my mind, it's like, oh, that sounds so fun. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I, I didn't get to do New Zealand, but um, I feel like I feel like uh, uh, New Zealand is a, a bucket list For sure. country. Also, um, but I've been to a lot of cool ones. Australia, you know, like for some reason, Australia, that's one that's like, you know, I, the, the, you know, the, 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 the people are so like laid back, man. Their, their, their motto is like, you know, no worries, sweet A's mate, you know, which is just, mean, <laughs> they're just walking around being like sweet A's mate, which means sweet ass. It's like, what? fucking planet am i on this is amazing um but yeah i'd say maybe australia too australia is a, a, another memorable one for me what is so you've done these challenges a lot you know and obviously the cts and those guys are on a lot guys like that because there's so much at stake because you could win a million dollars you know i i gotta I mean, this is kind of a tough question, but are some of these guys, are they taking steroids before they go on and do a season? Just do you guys get steroid tested? How does that work? No, no steroid testing. Um, you know, for a guy like me, that's, uh, you know, takes pride in his work ethic, takes pride in everything he does before the season, you know, year round. Um, you know, that, you know, that, 
that uh that topic is 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 definitely a little irking, you know. But someone like me is hard hard headed and stubborn as I am. I go, ah, I could fucking beat them anyway. I've been out working them in in the off season. Um, I've been you know I've been doing a lot more conditioning. Um, you know, but the truth is, is like, you know, it, you know when you know the rubber meets the road, it's like, you know, sometimes the road is much bigger and harder and 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 fucking rock solid, and, and you just sometimes you can't really go through a wall. But you know, I've I've had my you know, I've had my fair share of wins and losses with um, you know, you know, you know, people in, in, that run in that narrative and. I, you know, I just, I try not to think about it, um, anymore, but you know, again, man, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that's just like, you know, uh, I've worked so hard for my stature, which is just 165 pounds. And, uh, and you know, it's, uh, you know, that, that shit's annoying. You know, it would, it, you wonder the, 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 the real, the real answer is you just, you wonder, you know, who, who is, who isn't. And, um, you know, Adam, did How, we ask Bananas that question when he came on? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying I to forget, but if, I, I, I just worked out answer. Bananas last week, and I can tell you one thing. He's definitely not using steroids. So uh, <laughs> at this at this moment, at this moment, I can tell you that. I was like – No, I want to know, why is CT so dominant? I, I got to know, like, what is it about CT? Is he just, like, a crazy workhorse? Is it just he's so talented? Like, what the hell is it that – like, there just isn't people, like, someone to take him down. Why is that? Uh, well, I think, I think his mentality has changed in the, in the most recent 10 years, right? Whereas in the, in the pre, the original CT was just kind of just, you know, he was just kind of like, you know, he was, I think he was just more of like living off of his emotions. So if someone got him stirred up, you know, he may fucking knock him out. And, you know, from a, you know, competition standpoint, you know, some people would be like, well, he may just fucking, you know, lose it this time around or this season. And, uh, you know, but he's such an athlete and he's so feared that, you know, he may just come out with the win. So in, in the, the, the pre CT, he was the most athletic person. Right. But he had this like his only weakness was his only his only kryptonite was basically his himself and, and, and his emotions. Um, now it's like, he's got that all figured out. People still fear him. He's really smart. He's good at the puzzles. He's still the most athletic fucking guy on the field. <laughs> and people are scared of him. Like he is, he is the ultimate fucking challenge. Fina. Like he is, he like, how are you going to beat him? So, uh, you know, it's like probably team up with them and see if you can beat him in a final. Um, but now, like, he's literally lost the dad bod. Like, he's he doesn't um, – like, he looks better now than he has – well, listen, I I, I, I played against the, the CT that was fucking slim and trim and looking like a fucking model. And, and looking like he could dunk a fucking basketball on somebody and looking like a linebacker. So now it's like, I, you know, I really haven't seen him like up close like that. I haven't really analyzed, but I could see by the way, you know, he carries himself and you can just tell by his, you could tell that he's, he's slimmed up some. So like, this is the most, you know, feared CT there's really ever been because he's really got, the, he's really bringing the right mentality to the game. Like he probably won't punch you out nowadays. If you piss him off, he'll probably just scare the fuck out of you and continue playing the game. And, and that's it. It's like, um, and, it, and you know, it, it'll take an army to put him into elimination. Um, that's how they tried to do it. The first, this, this last season on double agents. And I really do think that we're, you know, the past couple of seasons we've seen, like, even when dad bod CT was around or he was calling him dad bod CT and no one wanted to pick him on the, uh, on that, uh, on that team where it was, uh, uh, you know, U S versus UK. Like they were talking about not picking him because he looked out of shape. He still won that fucking season. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, now he's got
got the he's got he's clearly got the right mentality. He's got he's got the right work ethic, you know, before he goes into the season. And people still fear him and he's good at puzzles. And like it's like you, you wonder, you know, watching this season, how they're potentially gonna try to come after him. Because at this point, it seems like the veterans all have this veteran truce and they're gonna, you know, maybe take out all try to take out all the rookies. And I'll tell you right now, the rookies ain't gonna be fucking you know, like, oh, let me go after CT first. There, it's just, it's just not gonna happen. He's yeah. just too well known. You know, he's the, he's the, he's the uh, reigning champ. Um, he's just like too powerful, really, in all ways. Yeah, like he's just, he's a, he's a soldier. You know, he, he's, he's like he'll Goro. Beat you in the, he's yeah, like he's, Goro. <laughs> Goro. He's fucking Goro. <laughs> <laughs> What, but what, Johnny Bananas, another thing. Why, you know, obviously Johnny, I think, has the most wins. I could be wrong on that, but maybe not anymore because he stepped down, but he's competed in the most challenges. Why has Johnny Bananas been so good at the challenge? Is it the mind games or what? So uh, Johnny Bananas is also like the ultimate uh, challenge uh, character. And um, he's won seven times. He is the all-time, all-time challenge champ. Uh, and, he, you know, I – he, he walked away from the game with like a fucking home run walked away with the championship and uh, after 20 seasons. And, uh, you know, I think he kind of did it the right way, but he's so good at, he's also so like versatile in, 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 in the physical realm and the social realm. And, and it's, and he's, it's, it's weird. It's almost like he's always made his road harder than it needed to be because he's like, he's like the the mouth. He's like the mouth of the South. He's like the one always talking. He's the one always putting the target on his back, but somehow he's always finding his way at the top of these things. I mean, yeah, he's had some shitty seasons. People might go on and say, Oh, look at his elimination record. It's not that great. I mean, he's probably been about fucking 30 eliminations. So, you know, over 20 seasons, I mean, he's so experienced that, that's that that that's there's the there's that that's where um CT and 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 uh Johnny kind of fall in the same bubble is they've had the experience. So there probably hasn't seen they probably haven't seen something that they haven't kind of already seen before. Like whether it's a climbing and a puzzle or it's like a you know you know whatever they're trying to you know pair up you know, you know, that, that com- competition day, it's like, they've kind of seen it before, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, what impresses me about Johnny is like, he's always been able to kind of, you know, he like find himself in like a shitty situation and then climb his way out of the hole and then become the champ. And he's not just the champ, he's the all time champ. So, um, and I just, it's, it's weird, man. Um, the way he's attacked some of these games, I was just like, bro, he is never going to win a challenge again. You know, but this whole bananas versus everybody mentality, like you can't do that anymore. You have to play the I'm an old man game type of mentality. I can't beat anybody mo- anymore. I've lost six challenges in a row. Fucking uh, uh, way to victory. No, this guy is just like, oh. Okay, I got a different route. I'm going to team up with my biggest foe in Wes and see how that happens. So it's like he's almost like also like not just the best. Um, he's not just the best like competitor. He's also like the best like reality TV personality that there's ever been. So um, whereas CT has uh, – people just love CT. He, he can do no wrong. You know, people have seen him grow. You know, people love that. People love the growth of, of, of people. And Johnny, like, he's been hated on and managed to still come out on top. Still on top of CT um, with his seven cha- seven challenge championship. So we'll see. Once CT gets to, like, 20, we can, you know, compare and contrast. But I just don't think that CT had the mentality of this, of, of the challenge being a sport and the challenge being, you know, Who's, you know, who's going to be the best at our sport at the end of this? You know, when we're 50, who's going to be the best at this 
fucking sport that we create. We fucking <laughs> created a sport. It's John, true. The, the people before us, the people that have, you know, uh, uh, you know, that have, you know, that have, didn't even know what the hell this is going to be. Um, but there's, uh, there's a middle chunk in here where it kind of became serious, you know, like we're going to count elimination records. We're going to fucking, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, w- you know, for me, I'm like, I'm the hardcore champion. No one's ever going to fucking have the hardcore title. Just like me and fucking Mick Foley did. Um, <laughs> so it's like, and now you've got all these people coming from other other countries, and they're like, "Oh, damn, this fucking exists. This is a whole different planet. Planet. This is like superheroes and supervillains fucking coming out to an island and 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 just you know, just just trading fucking superpowers." Yeah, you know, you you brought up Wes for a second there. Now I gotta know, is he gets a a pretty bad rap, I would say, on TV. They always kind of make him look like an a-hole. Is he like that in real life, or is this a character that he plays? Like, when cameras stop, is Wes pretty dope, or is what you see kind of what you get in real life? Yeah, you know, I, I, I used to, you know, I used to feel the same way uh, about him. Uh, we had a, we had a, you know, but it's weird, man. It's crazy, man. It's like, a lot of people are like 50-50 on this, you know? Like, for me, I, I also viewed him as like, you know, a bad guy, the, you know, the villain, for, for many, many years, you know, he's the guy that kind of like, you know, uh, you know, he was always on the opposite side of, of my people, of my alliance. So I was naturally like, you know, ah, he looks like an asshole, but, um, you know, we've, we've gotten a little bit closer over the years. And, uh, I, I do think that, um, you know, he, he is a good person outside of the show and, um, and, uh, and it's just like, it, it's who we gravitate to in the challenge. You know, some of us gravitate to, you know, it, it, just the different personalities we gravitate to and, and who we think is going to team up with me and who thinks I'm a fucking asshole, who doesn't think I'm an asshole. And we collectively think that that guy's an asshole, then we might as well just fucking try to get him out and vice versa. You know, there's going to be times where people fucking thought I was the biggest asshole or Johnny was the big. Luckily for me, Johnny was always the biggest. He was more <laughs> of an asshole than me. So they could just go after Johnny. First, and that was always my game plan. Um, but you know, you know, I, I you know, it's like Wes, Wes is one of those people that has um, always, you know, put his hand in the fire, and sometimes he gets burned, and but nonetheless, like he makes like you know very entertaining TV moments, and um, I think that that's a big part of the show too. Is like these vets that know like. We need to keep the franchise going. And if I got to throw my fucking, you know, if I got to put my balls in a fire to see how fucking hot they get, then, you know, so be it. And he's one of those franchise players that, you know, that the the MTV and Buna Murray continue to go to because he has this mind of, you know, whether I win or lose, you guys are going to fucking like seeing it or you guys are going to watch. Yeah. So, um, Yeah. So does TJ Levin have the best job, like one of the best jobs on TV? I mean, I feel like he kind of went into this job hosting, the show took off, and now he's like, fuck, dude, I got a great gig. I'm not leaving. Like, is is it all him when it comes to, I, I don't know, it just blows my mind, like how this guy who was a BMX racer, or BMX, you know, X Games type uh, performer, and now he's the host of the show, and now he's like, he could be kind of, um, looked at as like an Alex Trebek to a Pat Sajak. Like he is the host of the challenge. And now, he, I mean, he's been there for what, over 20 years now, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, I was there during his, his first season. I mean, just fucking raw, you know, just like, uh, you know, he took Dave Mira's spot. Oh, Dave Mira. That was, it was That's Dave Mira. Right. He went to I TJ Lavin. Holy shit, yeah. I forgot about that. So Dave. with but TJ though, do you guys ever like hang out with him or talk to him? Or like when the show's filming, do you get to actually hang with him? Or is he just like on his own thing, comes in, does his hosting, and then just walks away and you don't see him the rest of the day, the rest of the time? Yeah, you know, man, you, you know how it is, man. It's like for me, it, it it's like you can't he's like the referee. You know what I mean? He's like, you know, he's like you know, sometimes he's a referee. So like, you can't like, you don't want, you just want to respect like the lines, 
You know what I mean? So no, we don't like necessarily hang out with him, but you know, he's been on my podcast a few times. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, he's very, he's very like, he's very cool. I mean, it's not like we hang out with him. I mean, he came to one of our challenge media lives when we did, were, were in Vegas. Um, we do these live shows at comedy clubs. This one was not, um, in Vegas. Apparently Vegas does not have many comedy clubs. Um, but, uh, you know, like I just try to keep it like business like because I never want people to like assume that there's some sort of, you know, favoritism going going on or something along those lines. But he's really a fucking awesome person. I think that like the other day I saw him like FaceTiming with with uh, Drake, like it, something like that. I saw, you know, like Drake was supposed to come out and visit him. So it's like you want to talk about like. <laughs> you know, like the challenge franchise as a whole doing their part to like elevate our status. Like we're talking about fucking Drake coming to visit TJ, <laughs> you know, in whatever country, Cro Croatia, you know, but he couldn't because he had to finish something for his album. Like, um, you know, I think I was watching uh, TJ on MTV Cribs the other day and he said something like, Oh, Jennifer Love Hewitt used to live here. I'm like, oh shit, you used to have a crush on Jennifer Love Hewitt too? Wait a minute, she was sleeping in your bed? Like, you know, like we're fucking elevating on all spectrums. Like Johnny Bananas has got a fucking uh, a, a, a TV show after, uh, after SNL. Set. I, like, come on, man. J Johnny Bananas has been on Jimmy Kimmel. You know? Um, fucking CT's doing movies. Um... You know, we've got we've got people coming in from Nigeria with a million followers. You know, like it's 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 global, it's worldwide. Um, you know, like even when Wes and, and, and Johnny did their little stunt on uh Maury, like come on, you know, back then, like, yeah, we've had some cool celebrity stories. I've been recognized by a couple of cool celebrities, but like this who? Is, wait, who's wait? Who's who's a who's a big celebrity that came up to you and was like, "Man, I'm a fucking big challenge uh, fan." Uh, so uh, this is my favorite because obviously he's a fucking great dude and ha has reached um, beyond the stars. Um, I used to go to a church in Beverly Hills. Um, I forget what it's called. It's been it's been so long, um, but it's right there off of Rodeo Drive, and um, and. Uh, I mean, it was just common, like, uh, Master P would come in with all his kids and, um, and Mark Wahlberg would always, you know, you know, every now and then I'd see him over, you know, wherever he, he sat and stood or whatever. And, but it's all like, you know, you go to church, man, and you pray, you know, you go to church and you just thank God for, um, you know, where you are in life. And it's, it's not like this celebrity thing. It's just a church, man. You just go there. And, and I, and after church one day, Mark Wahlberg um, stopped me and said, hey, man, uh, I just want to tell you, uh, uh, you know, I really like you on that show. Um, me, I go, oh, I go, what's up, man? My name is Derek. He's like, Mark, nice to meet you. And uh, he goes, uh, yeah, me and my my girl, we don't we don't watch much. Uh, we don't wa get to watch much TV. But when we do, we we watch we watch you and really like, you know, what your character on there, what you're doing on there, something along those lines. And I was like, oh, I go, I go, I mean, I really appreciate that. I'm actually going into an elimination round in like next week. So you should probably check that out. It's going to be pretty cool. And, I, you know, and it was like, I just fucking treated him like he was any other person that's ever stopped me <laughs> and said anything. And as I walked away, I, I was at church with my friend. I was like, do you realize who the, f I'm like, God, part of my French, but who the fuck that was? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, man, I'm like, dude, I'm like, he's got like a basketball court in his background. I could be like playing basketball <laughs> with him and his buddies like on Sundays after church. How do I not, how did you not come up with anything other than nice to meet you? <laughs> so, um, I'll go watch the elimination round next week. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus. So, but, <laughs> You know, it's like, it's like, it's cool, man. It's cool to see that. And that was fucking, you know, almost 15 years ago. Um, and uh, so it's just cool to see like how far the franchise um, has come and, uh, you know, and everybody who's playing their part. Like, you know, I, I do the podcast, man, to like, 
keep these stories alive, you know, to keep, yeah. you know, these, you know, keep these people like, you know, that have, you know, played either a small part, part or a big part in the, on the challenge, like keep their names alive, keep their stories alive, like celebrate whatever moment that they had, you know? So, so I, wanted, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, cause you know, we only had so much time left. What was the craziest thing that you've ever seen happen on the show that never made air the wildest thing? So, uh, we were in the Czech Republic. Of course, it's a Johnny Banana story. We're in the Czech Republic, and we're drinking absinthe uh, during one of the nights. And we're fucking dipping our fingers in the absinthe and lighting our, our thumbs on fire. And, you know, I forget how you do it. It's like, you, then you fucking put it out. I, I don't even remember how you do it. You fucking light your thumb on fire, then you put it out, and and then you fucking take the shot, right? And we're all like... Like literally, like stubbing our thumbs, like we're they're like kind of like burning, like our thumbs are on fire. At some point, Johnny gets into it with a local and fucking pushes him down the stairs, like pushes him down a flight of stairs. And uh, and there's some like pushing and shoving, and the guy's like knocked out, like at the bottom of the stairs. And like, we all gotta like run out, scurry away. Um, and like they're like, all right, we gotta go, we gotta go. We're like stepping over another man that's like at the bottom of these stairs, like getting on the bus, like getting the fuck out of there before, you know, who knows what type of army is coming coming our way. So um that was probably like the craziest that's you know that I can I can I can say and talk about um without uh you know probably getting anybody in trouble. Um because that was just like a no one got in trouble, it was fine, like no one died. Um, but, uh, yeah, good times, man. We had a lot of good times. A lot of good times on so these shows. Wild. Now, so with your podcast, you know, obviously for fans of the challenge, you know, if they're tuning in, what are they getting? Like, give me a brief description of, like, what you're doing on your podcast to kind of lure some people over there. Yeah, I mean, we're just – we're analyzing and overanalyzing. Um, my, my co-host, he's uh, got about 15, 20 years of uh, behind-the-scenes – uh, you know, producing and, uh, and, and, uh, 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 um, just, he's, so he, he's got about 15, 20 years of behind the scenes, uh, work done. I've got about 15 and 20 years of on screen, uh, work done with the challenges. And, um, he's not challenged. He's more of like a project runway, stuff like that. He's a voiceover actor. He's also like a wrestling nerd and, uh, you know, knows all his superheroes and all that stuff. And uh, he and and, it, and he's also a fan, so he kind of brings this like different fan slash production uh, viewpoint into us breaking down. And then of course you've got me, who's who's basic, who's won, lost, um, you know, bled, cried over the years, uh, who's played the game with these people. And then uh, so we just basically we break down every you know the major moments, uh, the altercations. The competitions, the behind the scenes, the secrets, um, without of but, course. But are you going back in time? Are you doing new stuff? Like what? It, what? What's like when you say challenge mania? Obviously, is the name of the podcast. But um, what? You know, when you're breaking down these things, are you just saying, "Hey, remember when we were here?" And then you kind of tell the backstory from it. So, so we like we have a we have probably like the the most prominent person on from each episode so typically like the person that just went home was Michaela we had her on uh next week we'll probably get you know one of the most you know one of the more standout characters that was on you know the, the next episode and we'll break that down but we also have a Patreon where we dive in a little bit deeper and Derek's a little bit more uncensored because to be honest with you I can't like talk all my shit um on the main feed so I do it on the Patreon patreon.com backslash challenge mania that's where all our, all our bonus podcasts are and then for the main feed, like we're 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 um, we're breaking down the the episode, the newest episode with one of the main characters, um, and then I can kind of you know uh, you know compare and contrast uh, my gameplay moves, uh, you know things that I've seen in the in the past, and kind of you know work our way through the weeds of whether you were on Survivor and Big Brother and all your past challenge shows and. I can kind of give them a little bit of my advice on what they just did 
Um, but it's just like, it's like we just dive deep into each episode with basically the main character uh, every week. Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know if that's a big sell. It's probably, it's probably the worst. <laughs> no, I, th- I think for people that love the challenge shows, it's a sell. We, we, listen, this is how I, I usually put it. We break it down like it's fucking sports center. We are the ESPN of the challenge. Challenge Mania, challengemaniapodcast.com. If you want to check out our bonus shit, it's patreon.com backslash challenge mania. Um, we just started doing live shows again. Hopefully the Delta variant stays away. Um, Chicago show is sold out, but uh, there's still some meet and greets available for our Tampa show. That's challengemania.live. Or just check me out at Derek MTV. Uh, you can check out my my co-host. He's at Shot of Jaeger. Um, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, challengemaniapodcast.com if you want to you wanna, you wanna dive deep into the challenge world uh, every week. Cool. Yeah, Derek, man, you're the man, dude. Thank you so much for doing it. Congrats. Uh, I know you're doing some acting work as well, looking into that. And uh, it's good to see you, man. It's good to have an OG of the show, someone who I feel like in, in some ways we grew up with uh, as far as one of the – when reality TV first came on, you were one of the people that was like one of the first stars to us. And uh, it's good to have you, man. Thanks for being so candid and cool. I appreciate it, brother. Yes, thank you. No, nah, thank right, you, hey- guys. The best. Go Yankees. Go White Sox. Maybe one of us will fucking get it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was fun. That was fun to have a guy who's, uh, you know, again, he's one of the, in my opinion, one of the original reality stars. Mm-hmm. Like, not just, like, of the challenge and stuff. But he was, like, when reality TV first came up, he you know, I think goes in that genre of the, the, as one of the first reality shows. What do you think was the first reality show? No, for sure. I mean, dude, hundred percent MTV re- yeah. reality shows. I mean, Real World, Road Rules. Then it got into the challenges, but like legit. This, when we have people on, like Johnny Bananas or Mark Long or Derek, like it's kind of strange because they've been famous like for so long <laughs> you yeah. know what i'm saying they've been a reality tv for so long actually one of the coolest parties i've ever been to uh this was probably like eight years ago seven years ago i went to uh some bar in new york city was having like a challenge it was i got invited uh from my friend kenny from the challenge and he it was at a bar and all the challenge people were there just like hang out in new york city and i went and it was like all the old real world and challenge people there and i was like so geeking out like oh my god there's cyrus like i was just going nuts like i thought it was so cool and i just thought it was so interesting to to see them in their own element like because like they are normal people but just to see them just kind of hanging out this bar and they just took over the bar and there wasn't that many like normal people regular people there so it was just very like cool to see like stand on the wall and just kind of take it all in so but yeah man it's a cool and he's been on the show for a long time he hasn't been one of the biggest contenders when i mean big as far as size wise but like Derek's a feisty dude like when he's one on one with you he gets nasty well, I, like, he, I feel he, like he's, he's a warrior there's not a lot you know there's not a lot of people that their names are so recognizable you know what I'm saying like you've got the Johnny you got CT you got Wes you got like Derek is up in that high 100% tier of people who have remained on or remained on that show for a very long time that they became household names because of that show and so you know that I think that's what's fun to have them on. Hundred percent. But uh, uh, thank you guys for listening. You can see this podcast. We have a video portion. You can check us out on YouTube, Hollywood Raw Podcast. Uh, make sure you find us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're on all the social media sites. You can find me at, at Adam Glenn G L Y N. You can find Dax Holt at D A X H O L T. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks for watching the Hollywood Raw. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe. That way we can be friends for life. Ha, ha, ha.